Are you guys sure? Nut butt? Like, like a hard slap of the nut button? The Prog Lords are back. Despite Porcupine Tree being one of my favorite bands right now, I can't say I was totally on board with the idea of a new album. Taking 13 years off, growing apart from your old sound, and then trying to recapture the same magic is traditionally a recipe for disaster. Cool. Despite this though, there was plenty of reasons to be excited for this record. Even though Steve suggested a scrubbing of their metal accents, which is one of my favorite parts of the band, he wanted to take the band in a brand new direction. Hail Mary move but I respect it much more than trying to rehash their old sound. Even though it's like the exact same sound. I'm so glad that I've been able to get into this band. Steven Wilson is just fantastic in pretty much every avenue that he does, especially production. Hearing that they were going to step away from the metal sound, sometimes that's the best route for some people. And the promo videos for this thing, not just the interview, but the gear talks were so fascinating and gave you a preview into what to expect. Steve hinting at a new clean guitar based sound after just discovering what a Telecaster is five minutes ago. It's a beautiful thing when you have a guitar when you don't have to put a lot of gain on it, but it still sounds fuck off aggressive. So they did a good job of wiping the slate clean of expectations. Did they deliver? So we'll find out. Without further bovine excrement, I'm Darius King. I'm uh, Metalhead. This is Herodin. Such a compelling intro with Steve and Rich going total funk mode. Really an overall compelling song with Gavin Harrison being Gavin Harrison. Combining these funk tones with such ferocious energy. The janky Les Claypool-like bass intro. Fantastic way to kick this track off, followed by the fantastic kick-ass drums. Enjoy your kick-ass drums. And of course, the signature Steve's vocal effect. I really did enjoy the keyboard chords in the background. I thought those fit really nicely and you realized how much space it really fills in. What's amazing is that for most of the songs, Steve and company don't need big guitars or double bass kick drums to dial up an explosive moment. They knock you off your chair, of course, during the massive hook, but at plenty of other parts with Steve and his telly. I really love the way that Steve, rather than approaching it from, I'm gonna play this guitar part, he wants to create a sound and he doesn't care what instrument he uses to get that sound. He thinks more sound rather than different parts of instruments. This is the question they ask. Which guitar would you rescue if your house is burning down? None of them. The guitars, they're just tools. Powerful opener. That had me looking forward to the rest of the album. What's going on the playlist? Just an absolute nuclear explosion of prog. Just like singes your eyebrows off. One of the best Porcupine Trees songs that I've, I've heard on my wow. third album. This is going on the playlist. Steve and Rich deliver on the emotional vibe. Sounds like the last song you'd hear in a chick flick before the credits roll. They're able to blend the explosive moments well without clashing with the softer tone of the rest of the song. Well executed ballad, this one gets the seal of approval. Seal of approval. This is dissonant. This is weird. This is fucked up. Especially that music video. Holy shit. I think I'm feeling, uh, I think I'm feeling Primus on this one. Wow, okay. What I found interesting about this intro is it feels like a really well done mix between Dream Theater and Tool. The good parts of Tool's weirdness intro and then that hard hitting DT riff. The production on this song and the arrangement of all the different noises was just so well done. So this one put on the playlist. Yeah, Steve is a monster behind the boards. Big Pink Floyd vibes on this one. I guess that's fine, but relative to the band and even up to this point, it's pretty damn one dimensional. Hmm. The acoustic guitar is so rich in the mix and that, I wanna know what guitar that was. I mean, maybe- You know what guitar it is. That's your favorite brand. Uh, Babix. Oh, was it Babix? I thought maybe he was Spider using guitar. the new $5,000 Dave Mustaine custom acoustic with Vic on there. They, they should could. come out with a green version and slap Rust in Peace on it. It's just like the others, but it's green. Let's call it Rust in Peace. Rich breathes life into the song with his strings and the synth melody in the background. I think personally though, the driving bass kind of crashes with the overall softer tone that they're going for. This was not one of my favorites. I could really go either way on this one. After we shot this, I was hearing a lot of chatter online about this specific song, how it's one of the best on the album. Even a couple of you guys reached out and said, give it another shot. So I did, I had to give it another shot. And I have to say it is one of the better songs on the record. I love the passion, the drive and the excitement behind it. No, I'm just fucking with you. It's total mid. Total man. I'm really obsessed with a lot of the mixing on this album. Steve is just a genius when it comes to this stuff. This one gets the seal of approval. Oh, is this the sound of Muzak? Whoa. Now this is what the fuck I'm talking about. Steve's massive spacey vocals and the roaring guitar is the payoff I've been waiting for since the opener. Love hearing Steve test his vocal limits after the curse this place line. And then wait for it. Wait for it. 
Boom! Oh shit, there it goes. The intro has such the classic porcupine tree feel to me, and then they blow you out of the chair with that roaring riff. This may be one of my least favorite songs on the album due to lack of variety. Once you've heard the first three, four minutes, you kind of have the rest of the song in mind. I would actually have to agree. The big explosive hook and the end solo are really the main draw of this song. There are long chunks that don't really do much for it at all and just break up the flow of the song. But we're finally seeing the return of the metal sound. I thought uh, this monstrosity might have finally put that to bed. I love you, Steve. Just kidding. That's nah, actually a terrible album. Seal of approval. We can get pushed out of moving car. Steve securing the Elmo feature. Yeah, basically I can summarize it this way. Uh, this is a snooze fest hosted by Adam Jones and Larry Lalonde. So I'm thinking why. Wow. Middle of the road. Holy shit, man, what kind of pump fake is this song? Other than those sexy triplet notes, the first half of this song feel like a continuation of that snooze fest from the last one. I like how it lays the groundwork for what's to come, but to quote the great philosopher Metalhead, I didn't feel like that intro needed to be five minutes long. See, it works. The atmosphere knob, I feel like, was set to max on this song, ripping some fantastic bass lines and holding the pocket so well. But then, Alex Lifeson shows up to save the day with some natural science. Yeah. As, As if, if that's, that's not metal enough, Steve steals Kirk's wah pedal. Too. Gavin starting up the pressure cooker and dialing up the intensity. This is what I was waiting for the whole album. The prog beast is unleashed. I'm not saying I want Porcupine Tree to turn into a full-blown metal band, but what drew me to their sound is that they use it as an accent for their music and don't base their whole sound around it. They combine their hazy Pink Floydish foundation with the occasional jolt of the massive guitar to keep things interesting. Although here, we, we could have used the defibrillator later earlier in the song. I think the patient left us after five minutes. But the second half, most definitely going on the playlist. Going on the playlist. It's not marked on streaming, but for those that don't know, these last three are just bonus tracks. I feel like they're all pretty coherent tracks. I would have to say probably Never Have is my favorite of the bonus track. Yeah, Never Have is actually Right Now by Van Halen. Population 3 has some nasty guitar riff and haunting clean tone, and it would probably be in the upper half of the main track list for me. Love in the Past Tense has a really cool intro. Really, yeah, mm. uh, really cool intro. Overall, this is a great album for Porcupine Tree. I was not expecting this type of caliber and almost perfection from them. The compositions are so well done and the arrangements are tasteful and unique. The production is top notch and the mix is just astonishing to me. Closure Continuation has plenty of brilliant moments in it that display that the band still has some great ideas left in the tank. However, these are unfortunately limited moments. Other than the opener at Herod and there really isn't a song on here that captivated me all the way through. Songs like Herd Culling, Get You On Your Feet, for the majority, but quickly fall back into a stupor just when you're ready for more. And others like Walk the Plank and Dignity could be a nice listen if you're in the mood rush, but are pretty dull most of the way through. I do feel things holding this back were certain moments of being lost in the songs, and also uh, I would say the lyrics were not top shelf. If they removed a lot of the fluff they had in certain songs that really was unneeded and also bolstered up the lyrics, this would be one of their best albums. I, I, I'm like scratching my head looking at the reviews and like the critic reaction. I mean, usually the critic reaction is just not all over everything constantly, but I'm kind of more in the YouTube reviews that I've seen so far camp where mm -hmm. I'm kind of like, did we listen to the same album? Totally agree that this is like fluff galore, but for me, it was just like a fucking Build-A-Bear workshop. Mm. And you can tell me that I'm literally Hitler or whatever because I have like a different opinion. I kind of feel the same way that I feel about their 90s stuff. It's just like, Okay. okay. The thing is, they made it sound like we're getting a brand new sound, but in reality, most of the records sound like a watered down version of their monumental 2000s material. I'm really hoping they're leaning more towards continuation and not ending with this one. I'm gonna go middle of the road. Wow. Two things I'll say. I'll say the rating and the other thing that'll probably get me executed. I think this is better than Fear of a Blank Planet. And I'm on my way there right now. This one's going on the playlist. Wow. Pure grocery store music.